Every single day, over 2 billion cups of instant coffee are consumed worldwide, making it one of the most popular beverages on the planet. Behind this caffeinated empire lies an incredible industrial process that transforms humble coffee beans into those tiny granules that dissolve instantly in hot water. Today we're taking you inside a massive instant coffee factory where 50,000 jars are filled every hour. And it all starts with a journey that spans continents and involves cutting-edge technology worth millions of dollars. Welcome back to Process Nest, where we uncover the fascinating world of manufacturing. Today, we're diving deep into the complex world of instant coffee production. From bean selection to your breakfast table, this process is far more intricate than you might imagine. So let's get started. The journey begins thousands of miles away in sprawling coffee plantations across Brazil, Vietnam, and Colombia, countries that collectively supply over 60% of the world's coffee beans. But here's the fascinating part. Not just any beans make it to the instant coffee factory. Quality control starts right here at the source, and it's more rigorous than you might imagine. Coffee plants begin their life cycle with delicate, fragrant white flowers that bloom for just two to three days. Over the next six to nine months, these flowers slowly transform into vibrant red cherries. Farmers monitor these plants with incredible precision because timing is absolutely everything in coffee production. Coffee cherries must be picked when exactly 95% of them have turned that deep, rich red color, with only a few greenish ones remaining on the plant. Pick too early, and you get sour, underdeveloped flavors. Pick too late, and the cherries become overripe, leading to fermented, unpleasant tastes. On smaller farms, this harvesting is still done by hand, a painstaking process where experienced pickers can collect about 100 to 200 pounds of cherries per day. But on large-scale operations, specialized harvesting machines take over. These incredible machines use 1,500 vibrating rods on rotating cylinders that shake the branches as they pass through. Each rod vibrates up to 1,000 times per minute, causing only the ripe cherries to fall into collection plates below. With just two to three seconds spent on each tree, a single machine can collect what would take dozens of hand pickers an entire day to gather. Once harvested, the clock starts ticking. The cherries have just 8 to 12 hours before they begin to ferment naturally, which would ruin the coffee's flavor profile. This is where the wet processing method begins, a complex procedure that's been refined over centuries. First, the cherries are fed into gravity separators, large water tanks where the ripe, dense cherries sink to the bottom while the lighter, unripe ones float to the top to be discarded. The good cherries then move to depulping machines with rotating drums lined with rough surfaces that gently press the cherries against fixed plates, separating the juicy pulp from the precious coffee beans inside. But even after depulping, the beans are still covered with a sticky, slimy layer called mucilage. To remove this, they're transferred into fermentation tanks lined with ceramic tiles and filled with clean mountain water. Over the next 12 to 24 hours, natural enzymes break down the mucilage. Farmers must monitor this process constantly. Too little fermentation and the mucilage won't come off. Too much and the beans develop unpleasant sour flavors. After fermentation comes the washing stage. Farmers check the beans by hand, feeling the surface to ensure the mucilage has softened properly. Fresh water is added to the tanks, and using long wooden tools, workers vigorously stir the beans to scrub away the sticky residue. This process is repeated multiple times until the water runs clear and the beans are spotless. The final stage is sun drying. The washed beans are spread evenly across large drying beds or parchment surfaces, sometimes under shade to protect them from unpredictable weather. Throughout the day, farmers use rakes to turn the beans, ensuring they dry evenly. This process takes one to two weeks, depending on weather conditions, with the goal of reaching that critical 11% moisture content. 
The dried beans, now called green coffee and still wrapped in their protective parchment layer, are fed through hulling machines that gently strip away this parchment, finally revealing the familiar green coffee beans we recognize. These beans are then carefully sorted by size and quality, packed into 60 kilogram jute bags and labeled with detailed origin information, the farm, processing date, and quality grade. Each bag represents the work of dozens of people and months of careful cultivation, all heading toward factories that will transform them into the instant coffee consumed by millions worldwide. When these precious bags of green coffee arrive at the instant coffee factory, they enter a world of precision engineering and automation that would make any tech enthusiast marvel. The sheer scale of operation becomes immediately apparent. A single facility processes over 1,000 tons of coffee beans daily, which means hundreds of trucks arrive at the loading docks every single day. The first challenge is purely physical. How do you efficiently and safely handle thousands of 60-kilogram bags without injuring workers or slowing down production? The answer lies in sophisticated robotic systems that have revolutionized the coffee industry. Watch as this specialized robotic arm, equipped with what's called a spider gripper, approaches each bag with mechanical precision. This gripper uses multiple suction points to create a secure hold on the bag's surface, lifting weights that would require two strong workers to handle. The robot can process one bag every 15 seconds, working continuously for 24 hours without fatigue, breaks, or the risk of repetitive strain injuries that plagued factory workers for decades. As the bags travel along the extended conveyor belt system, they pass through multiple automated checkpoints. The first is a sophisticated moisture detection system that uses near-infrared technology to measure the water content of the beans through the bag material itself. Remember that critical 11% moisture level we talked about? Any bag that registers even 0.5% outside this range is automatically diverted off the main conveyor line. Next comes one of the most sophisticated quality control measures, robotic sampling probes. These needle-like devices can penetrate the bag and extract a small sample of beans as the bag passes by. These samples are immediately sent to the Quality Control Laboratory where they'll undergo chemical analysis for caffeine content, acidity levels, and potential contaminants. The approved bags then meet another set of robotic arms that automatically stack them onto pallets with mathematical precision. These robots can calculate the optimal stacking pattern to maximize stability while ensuring easy access for the next stage of processing. Each pallet is weighed again to ensure consistent loading for the forklifts that will transport them to the processing area. Even in this age of automation and advanced technology, there's one aspect of coffee production that remains distinctly human, taste. No machine, no matter how sophisticated, can replicate the complexity of human taste buds and the trained palate of a professional coffee taster. Meet the coffee cupping specialists, the unsung heroes of the instant coffee world. These individuals possess palates that have been refined through years of training and daily practice. They can distinguish between hundreds of different flavor notes, detect the subtlest variations in acidity, body, and aroma, and identify the geographic origin of beans with remarkable accuracy. Their daily routine is both fascinating and demanding. Each morning, they taste between 80 to 100 different coffee samples, following a strict protocol that has remained virtually unchanged for over a century. The process begins at exactly 9 a.m., when their palates are most sensitive, before any external factors can interfere with their judgment. The cupping room itself is a controlled environment. Temperature is maintained at exactly 21 degrees Celsius, humidity at 60%, and fluorescent lighting provides consistent illumination to evaluate the coffee's appearance. The tasters wear no perfumes, avoid spicy or strongly flavored foods for at least 12 hours before tasting, and some even avoid alcohol for days before important evaluations. The cupping process follows precise steps, First, the ground coffee is inspected for color consistency and aroma intensity. 
Then, hot water at exactly 93 degrees Celsius is poured over the grounds and left to steep for four minutes. The taster breaks the crust that forms on top, releasing a burst of aroma that provides the first clue about the coffee's quality. After 10 minutes of cooling, the real tasting begins. Using special cupping spoons, the tasters slurp the coffee. Yes, slurping is actually required because it helps distribute the liquid across all taste receptors and allows them to evaluate the coffee's mouthfeel and finish. They evaluate multiple criteria, fragrance and aroma intensity, flavor clarity, acidity balance, body weight, sweetness levels, and the aftertaste duration. Each sample is scored on a 100-point scale, and only coffees scoring 80 or above are approved for instant coffee production. The approved beans are then fed into industrial sifting machines with vibrating floors that shake at precisely calibrated frequencies. This process removes any remaining debris, broken beans, and foreign materials that might have survived the journey from farm to factory. Only perfectly whole, clean beans make it through to the next stage. Now comes one of the most critical steps, roasting. The green coffee beans are fed into massive double-walled rotating drums heated to temperatures between 190 degrees Celsius and 280 degrees Celsius. Inside these drums, specially designed paddles keep the beans in constant motion, ensuring even roasting without any scorching. Here's where science meets art. Depending on the desired flavor profile, Roasting time can vary from 8 to 20 minutes. Lighter roasts, which spend less time in the drum, actually retain more caffeine, while darker roasts develop bolder, more robust flavors but contain slightly less caffeine. The roasted beans are then rapidly cooled in large trays with powerful fans blowing air from underneath, while mechanical arms continuously stir them. This cooling process takes exactly 5 to 10 minutes and is crucial for stopping the roasting process at the perfect moment to lock in the desired flavor profile. The cooled beans are automatically fed into industrial coffee mills that grind them into a coarse powder. But unlike the coffee you brew at home, this powder has a very specific purpose. It's going to be brewed into an incredibly concentrated coffee extract. This extract is created using a combination of steam and pressure in massive stainless steel tanks. The brewing process extracts maximum flavor and caffeine from the ground coffee, creating a liquid that's far stronger than any espresso you've ever tasted. From here, the liquid coffee extract can follow one of two fascinating paths, each producing a completely different type of instant coffee. For regular instant coffee granules, the extract enters a massive spray-drying tower. Some of these towers are over 10 stories tall. Inside, the liquid extract is atomized through high-pressure nozzles, creating millions of tiny coffee droplets. Simultaneously, scorching hot air at 540 degrees Celsius, traveling at speeds of 400 miles per hour, instantly evaporates all the moisture from these droplets. What remains are the tiny solid coffee particles that settle at the bottom. This is the instant coffee powder we're all familiar with. The entire process happens in seconds, but the engineering required to achieve this precision is mind-blowing. For premium instant coffee, the process is even more sophisticated. The coffee extract is first concentrated into a thick, toffee-like substance through careful heating and evaporation. This concentrate is then transported on conveyor belts into a 30-meter freezing tunnel where temperatures plummet to minus 50 degrees Celsius. The result is a sheet of frozen coffee that looks like dark ice. Rotating blades then break this frozen sheet into small granules, but the real magic happens next, sublimation. These frozen granules are placed in low-pressure chambers and heated to exactly 60 degrees Celsius for five hours. Under these precise conditions, the frozen water transforms directly into vapor without ever becoming liquid, leaving behind perfectly dry coffee granules that retain all their original flavor and aroma. The final stage happens at incredible speed. Modern instant coffee factories can fill up to 320 jars per minute. That's more than five jars every second. 
As empty jars race along the production line, they're filled with exactly the right amount of coffee granules using precision weighing systems. Each jar is immediately sealed airtight to lock in freshness, then capped and labeled. The entire packaging process is monitored by sensors that can detect even the smallest variations in weight or seal quality. The scale of this operation is truly staggering. A single factory can produce over 250,000 jars daily, and it takes approximately 2 kilograms of fresh coffee beans to produce just 1 kilogram of instant coffee. The entire process, from bean arrival to packaged jar, takes about 24 hours, but the planning and precision required represents decades of engineering advancement. As you can see, the journey from coffee plantation to your morning cup involves cutting-edge technology, human expertise, and precise scientific control at every step. The next time you stir those granules into hot water and watch them dissolve instantly, you'll know the incredible industrial symphony that made that simple moment possible. Thanks for watching Process Nest. If you enjoyed this deep dive into instant coffee manufacturing, hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating factory processes. Comment below and let us know what manufacturing process you'd like us to explore next.